Hello there. I would like to tell you the story of the Frog King. It's usually called the Frog Prince these days, and it ends with a kiss, but this will be closer to the original story that was collected by the Brothers Grimm. I will illustrate the tale with an old public domain comic I found. It's pretty close to the story, but mostly it lets me be lazy and not look for better pictures. Don't mind that the comic panels don't match the story perfectly. After all, I don't mind. Now, the story of the Frog King. In old times, when wishes could come true, there lived a king with several daughters. All were beautiful, as princesses and stories often are, but the youngest was so lovely that the sun, which sees so much, was surprised every time it shone on her face. The king's castle was next to a great, dark forest, and in that forest was a well under an old lime tree. When days got warm, the youngest princess would sit on the well in the shade, and when she got bored, she would toss a golden ball in the air and then catch it. The ball was her favorite toy. Here we can see her playing with that ball. She is clearly easily amused. And here we can see that she is also a bit careless, because one day it happened that when she threw the ball high into the air, she missed it coming down. Plunk! The golden ball fell into the well, and it sunk so deep that she couldn't even make out its golden shine in the darkness. At this, she began to cry, then cried louder and louder as she missed her ball more and more. At last, a voice spoke. What's wrong, dear princess? Your weeping would move even a stone's heart to pity you. The princess paused in her sobbing and looked around. She saw that the source of the voice was an ugly frog's head bobbing in the water. And, oh dear, the frog is dressed like a Swiss mountaineer. Like like frogs usually are, I guess? Uh, anyway, she was startled, but answered, I am weeping for my golden ball, which has fallen into the water. Oh man, that frog. I, I mean, he, he replied, There's no need to cry, then. I can help you. But tell me, what would you give me if I were to fetch your golden ball? Oh, whatever you would like. My, my clothes, my pearls and jewels, and even the golden crown I'm wearing. The frog replied, I do not care for clothes or pearls and jewels or for a crown, but let me be your close companion and sit with you at dinner and eat from your golden plate and drink from your little cup and sleep on your soft pillow and I will swim down and fetch your golden ball. Oh yes, the princess exclaimed. I promise to do all of that if you'll just bring me my ball back. Inside, however, she was thinking, what a silly frog. He lives in the water and croaks. He could never be a proper friend to a princess like me. The frog only heard her outside voice, though, so his head plunked under the water and disappeared into the well. A few moments later, he blipped back up with a golden ball in his mouth. The princess, delighted to have her favorite toy returned, snatched the ball right out of his mouth and then ran toward the castle at full speed. Wait, wait, cried the frog. Take me with you. I can't run as fast as you can. But she pretended not to hear him, continuing to run home while clutching her precious ball. When she got back to the castle, she promptly forgot all about the frog. The next day, when she sat at the dinner table with her father and ate from her golden plate, something came creeping up the marble staircase to the dining hall. Splish splash, splish splash. When it got to the top, there was a knocking at the door. Dip, dip. Princess, dear princess, open the door for me. The princess, who had indeed forgotten all about the frog, opened the door to see who it was. Seeing the frog brought her memory back, and she slammed the door. Bang! She hurried back to the table, trying to act like everything was fine. She wasn't good at acting. Her father, the king, asked, My child, what frightened you? Who was at the door? Was it some giant to come to steal you away? Oh no, father. It was just a disgusting frog. What? Does a frog want with a princess? So she explained about her golden ball and the well and her promises to the frog. I never thought he would be able to leave the water, let alone hop all the way here. And from the other side of the door came a voice. Princess, youngest princess, do you not remember what you said to me by the well? Princess, youngest princess, open the door for me. The king scolded her. A princess must keep her promises. Let him in. The princess reluctantly went to the door and opened it again, and this time the frog hopped into the room before it could be closed again. She returned to her chair. The frog hopped along behind her, then stopped. Lift me up to sit next to you. She hesitated, but the king gestured at the princess to do as the frog said. With a sigh, she lifted him onto the table. Then the frog said, Now push your golden plate closer so we can eat together. She was clearly not thrilled by the suggestion, but she did as she was told. 
The frog ate the food with enthusiasm, clearly enjoying every bite. But the princess nearly choked every time she tried to swallow, seeing the frog sharing her plate. I can't really blame her, to be honest. I'm sorry I keep getting hung up on this, but the frog is carrying a walking stick? Uh, why does a frog have a walking stick? Once upon a time, somebody chose to draw a frog wearing lederhosen, and I, I wish I knew why. But I'll continue. At length, the frog said, I am full, and now I am tired. Carry me into your room and make your silken bed ready, and we will both lie down to sleep. The princess started to cry at that. She didn't like carrying the cold, slimy frog, and she didn't like the thought of it sleeping in her pretty, clean bed either. But the king saw this and got angry. He who helped you when you were in trouble should not be despised by you afterward. So she picked up the frog carefully with two fingers, carried him upstairs, then dropped him in the corner of a bedroom. Then she climbed into her bed and pretended to have fallen asleep immediately, with some very unconvincing but dainty little princess snores. Wee-hoo! 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 I know the picture doesn't show her in bed, but pretend it does. The frog hopped next to the bed, which she was absolutely lying in. I am tired, and I want to sleep on your soft pillow. Lift me up, or I'll tell your father. That was the final straw for the princess, and she lost her temper. She stopped pretending to sleep. And she grabbed the frog, then she threw him against the wall. Thwap! See, this is a big difference from how we usually tell it, but really, in the original story, she throws him, she doesn't kiss him. A kiss would probably hurt less. She also doesn't suddenly act nice in the story like this comic has her do. Instead, she declares, Now you will be quiet, you odious little frog! That's definitely not nice. But, after the frog hit the wall, when he fell to the floor, he was no longer a frog. He was a prince with beautiful, kind eyes. While she stared in amazement, the prince explained that he had been turned into a frog by a wicked witch. No one could have broken the spell but her. I guess this explains how the frog got tiny clothes that fit him in the first place. The wicked witch included them in the spell. She must have really wanted to humiliate him. When the pair went to tell the king what had happened, he declared that, because she had promised to be his close companion, she was to be his wife. Neither of them objected. I guess according to this comic, she completely changed her attitude because he wasn't ugly anymore. That's a great lesson for kids. I, I mean, the very next day, they were married and rode off to his kingdom, presumably to live happily ever after. And if the next page of the comic is anything to go by, he bought her some nice rings and she bought him a watch. Because the best way to buy wedding rings is through an ad in a comic book. The end. <laughs>